Hi everyone. Uh, today what I'd like to do is share a card with you that I recently put on Instagram. Uh, this card uses the uh, Hero Arts monthly kit for the month of July. Also an add-on kit uh, called Deeply in Love for the little deep sea diver that I use. When I put it on Instagram, there were a few people who were interested in how I did the little uh, scene at the bottom of my card. That's what I wanted to mainly focus on today. For the card base, I'm using some Gina K Design uh, heavyweight cardstock, and this uh, for the slimline card measures eight by nine inches, and I scored it at four inches. So we're going to put that to the side. In addition to that, the other card stocks that I'm using today, this is Denim Blue, also by Jane and Kay, and I'm using this for my uh, layering. And I cut from uh, some Nina White 90 pound card stock, a panel that's three and a half by eight and a half, and that's gonna be our, the, the panel that we work with. I use the uh, stitched edge die from um, lawn fawn to do that but you wouldn't need the stitching along the side as a matter of fact it doesn't even on the final card doesn't show up that much but so you could actually just cut a piece of white cardstock that's uh, three and a half by eight and a half and that will work just fine from my scrap pile I found a piece of cardstock that I cut just a little bit smaller here it's just a quarter of an inch smaller so it would be three and a quarter by eight and a quarter and this is going to make the magic for our card. I just took the die from the kit. This is the die of the underwater scene and I'm just going to cut this at the base of my scrap paper here. That's going to make our little underwater scene. So you could just pick out which area you like. I think that's where I cut it before so we'll use it that way again. Um, I'm always trying to to recreate my cards and they don't always come out exactly the same but basically you'll get the idea. So I'm going to take this to my die cutting machine and I'll be right back. So uh, after we take it to the die cutting machine I'm just going to remove the die and what we end up with here is just this like little stencil. So what I'm going to do is just remove all the little windows and th things in my die and we'll end up with that. Let me just get rid of this little scraps of paper. Is We're sort of going to work in sections here. We're just going to put it right here like so and I'm going to work upward. The inks that I'm using today are Salty Ocean and the Chip Sapphire. I'm also using these two uh, that were included in the kit, the Splash and the Blue uh, Hawaii. So it's, all, it's going to be kind of a monotone blue on blue kind of thing. So I'm, I took out some blending brushes and what I'm going to do here is just hold my little stencil in place. I'm not even going to tape it down. Uh, let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to just color off here and then we're, we're going to just work on this. If you feel more comfortable taping it in place or you know even going so far as putting an adhesive in there you could do that. This little piece here is a little more. The idea is to get a little darker edge right in here at the bottom and then as we move up I want to just pull the color up that in that direction but it's going to be softer up there, a lot softer. I sort of want to get the blue everywhere but I want it soft here at the top. Still holding this in place until I make sure I have a good edge there and then I'm going to take this off and then you'll see what we're going to get there. We have that little line there. Pretty distinct at this point but we're going to be changing that. So here I'm going to again just continue working this in but it's going to be fading at the top. Don't, just want to be careful not to get any harsh lines up there. Just a, pretty much just using what's left on your brush to get that top portion. 
So there we go, that part is done. Now, for the lower part, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to match up my little fake stencil here with the bottom part of our design. Here I'm going to use the chip sapphire. And we're going to do the same thing on the bottom of this. We're going to just go right over the top of the windows and everything that are there already in the stencil. And I'm just going to go darker here at the top. going to move that up a little bit because as you see that white line we don't want to have that little white line so I'm moving it up a little bit and if we get a little white line at that edge we can fix that very easily too all right so we're going to do the same thing as before I'm hoping you're seeing this keeping it on camera now in this area we're just going to once we get that darkness in here then below we're going to go lighter. Not so dark though that we're going to cover up all those little windows. So there we go. You can see that now we have like this haunting kind of a line there. If there's just a little bit of um, whiteness there, I just took a pencil and just colored in that white. You know, anything would do. Colored pencil, I'm just using a regular pencil and just colored in that little bit of white just to blend it in. You probably could even use your of the first brush that you use just to go over to that edge like so okay so now we have that wispy kind of a thing there and then you're saying well, okay now below this we still have a lot of white area but that's not to not to worry about that because that's where our stamping is going to go okay so I think that's good. So now we're just going to get out the Misty and we're going to start putting in our, our stamping here. Then I have the new Misty. I don't know if you know if any of you have gotten the the new Misty yet, but my Misty was the old old one that had um, that was the very original one that had uh, like painted lines on the top in pink, and that the my lines finally, you know, they were. They were wearing off, and I was just getting some cracking in my hinges, so I I splurged and got myself a new Misty. I'm still, you know, getting used to using this one because it has a different color edge here. It's like a clear edge rather than the pink right on the edge, so I'm still working on getting used to that. But it, it all in all, I'm just happy with getting a new Misty for myself. So now I've got my uh, panel lined up in my Misty. And I'm going to just uh, line up the first layer of the stamp where I would like it to be. And I think that looks like it's a good spot for it. So I'm going to line it up there. And for this I'm going to use the uh, splash ink that was included in the kit. So I'm going to ink this up really well. might have to do that again but I've got it inked up really well and I'm just going to go ahead and stamp it. It's going to actually stamp off my card but okay I'm going to lift and we're going to do that one more time. I'm just going to add ink where I can see that the card actually is this time so we don't get too inky. just going to apply it again second layer and bring that out 
I think I still want a little bit of ink right in this area of the stamp. And one more time right there. Alright, I think that's good. So now we have our first layer down. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit so we don't get ink all over. And remove our first layer. I almost think that with these layering stamps, you have to sort of layer them and play with them one time just to see how exactly they work and how they go onto your card. Okay, because this next, I'm, I only use two of the three layers for my card because I think it has enough going on without that. So, so now that the clue here is to line up the little lines with your um, canyons. And I think that's lined up pretty good. So I'm going to pick it up. We're going to then take our uh, darkest ink, which would be the um, chip sapphire ink, and we're going to just go ahead and ink the stamp with that blue sapphire. And take this over and give it a stamping here. And I think we lined it up really nice. So that's going to go over it again. Now I could just leave it like that, but it looks like I did use the third stamp in my um, in my original card. I thought I didn't, but I, as I'm looking at the card, it looks like I also used the original the the third uh, stamp as well. So let's just go ahead and put that in. See if we can line it up properly. And the clue is going to be to line up this little fern over here on the side. So we're going to line that up, and this time I'm going to use the Blue Hawaiian. And let's just go ahead and throw that in and hope for the best here. Let's give it one more inking with that blue Hawaiian. I was a little bit afraid because I thought I might have should should have done that black layer last, but you know what? It turned turned out pretty good, so there we go. So that's how we did our little scene on the bottom of the card. So you can see we have all of the elements in there. You know, if that one spot here looks a little bit too light for you, you can always just take back your blending brush that had that dark sapphire on it and just come in and just take out a little bit of that whiteness in there. But I sort of like the, the, the illusion of depth that it gives with the different layers like so. So there we go. Now all we have to do is add our little um, our little deep sea fisher, and I've already colored this one. Uh, let me just show you the colors that I used so that you you uh, you you know I didn't use that many colors as you can see. What I used is the R24 for the uh, the little. Uh, shirt on the fella and I used uh, for inside his uh, headgear what do you call that and his deep sea shield whatever 
I used some uh, BG000 and then for his little suit I used just uh, three of the my neutral uh, grays. So I used an N, an N0, uh, N2, and an N4 to do that little guy. And that's all the colors I used. So we're going to put our uh, little guy back into the Misty just to sort of get an idea of spacing and so forth, where we want him to go. And I think he's going to go right here. Also, I'm going to add some of the little fish. We're going to use the single, I don't know if this is a dolphin or a whale, but we're just going to put him right there in that space just to give a little interest down here. Actually, you could put two of them in there. We'll make it really shark infested waters here. Although this one looks more, they look more like porpoises to me, but we're going to put them down here just to give a little more interest. And we need his little, um, we need his little air hose. We just sort of want to get it so it's going to go like into him like that. And so that's where he's going to be. Let me just push, put this together here and we can take him out. For the little dolphin, I'm going to use our, uh, the dolphins, I'm going to use our darkest blue color. So I'm going to ink those up with some chip sapphire. I used uh, some intense, or no, this is Hero Arts Intense Black. So I'm going to just use that for the uh, the air holes. Let's get our little guy up. There we go. So that gives us even more interest down here in the lower. If you can see more interest there. And we have these little air holes starting here. But I sort of wanted the air holes to look like it came up from the surface. So what I did here is I just added another curve. I can clean that up just a little bit with one, a memento uh, marker or you could use a micron marker just to connect that edge a little bit better. Looks like I went a little heavy on that but I'm not a problem. I can just clean it up a little bit, like I said, with my memento marker here. So I'm just going to use some little foam squares to uh, attach my little um, deep sea diver to his spot on my card. Inky fingers. <laughs> I'm sure that's not a not a thing you're unfamiliar with. Okay, there's plenty of foam on the back here. We're going to just remove our little foam pieces. Oh, you know, before we put them on, we probably should decide what kind of a sentiment is going to go on our card. Uh, on my original card, I used the sentiment that said, um, thank you from the bottom of my heart, which I thought was really good. But I don't usually like to make two cards the same. So for this one, I think I'm going to put the sentiment that says, celebrate today. This way I could actually send it as a birthday card if I liked. Celebrate today. I even have like a little banner here that says happy birthday. And I might put that there because I actually would cover up that little mishap with our uh, with our with our hose that I overstamped. So let's do that. 
going to get the misty set up and take this guy out. Remove some of the ink from my fingers. I think that's going to look good like that. So, and, and you know what? I'm going to also put in some bubbles. The add-on said had some little bubbles that I want to put in there. So let's get those out. Some cute little bubbles. Since his head's going to be right about there, I think we can put the bubbles like right about there as well. I'm going to use again the intense black ink from Hero Arts. And stamp that in place. Give it one more stamping on the um, the greeting. I'm not going to do the bubbles again. I don't want the bubbles to be that dark, but I do want the greeting to be darker. I think that's good. Do we need more bubbles? Mm. Let's see. Before I take it out, do we need more bubbles? No, I think one set of bubbles is going to be good. So I'm just going to place the little deep sea diver here. I'm going to pop up my happy birthday. So this is our base. Bring the base back in and our back panel. Let's put that in place first. You know, I'm just putting it so we have like one eighth uh, border all the way around the edge. I'm going to use some of my adhesive tape to just add that in place. I always do more adhesive than. I always think more is better. I'm always afraid that it's going to fall apart after I've done all the work on my card. Okay, so that's that. And we'll add some adhesive to this piece. A lot of times I do this with score tape so it really is stuck but you have to be very precise with the score tape there's not a whole lot of room for um, for error I like the tapes better than the liquid adhesive because I mean I don't like any bowing in the card and sometimes the wetness of the adhesive will cause some bowing and then we had decided that we're going to put happy birthday there too um, I have some black foam adhesive squares. That's going to look probably better with this little black banner. Oh, this little black banner um, I had in my stash already. It actually is from um, dye and the greeting is said it's from a lawn font. And I'll put it in my description uh, and also I'll, I'll add it to um, I'll add it on all the, all the supplies will be listed on my um, blog. So if you're interested in precisely everything that I used, I'm going to put it there. Just makes it easier. I'm trying to find this because this one, you know, what I tend to do is like print, do a lot of these little. Um, when I'm using the stamp, I'll do extras, and then if I don't use it, I will stick it to the side in my in a little container, and then when I need it, I'm going to use it then. Then, just as a finishing touch, I'm going to take the glossy accents and put glossy accents in my bubbles. Now, there's one overlapping bubble. And so I'm going to have to come back after everything is dry to do that last bubble. And I'm going to try to remember that this adhesive is wet and not goof it up. 
so there you go that's how I did the card um, I hope that you know um, this gives you some inspiration and uh, will help you to create something similar or better <laughs> anyway thanks a lot for for watching today and I hope you'll come back uh, I plan on doing more videos in the future and uh, for now goodbye if you like the video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and share and all those good things okay I'll see you later thanks bye bye